Hi guys, I have a special treat today. Um, I'm going to actually do two story time Sundays because I didn't do one last week when I promised and that was totally my fault. So this morning I'm going to do story time Sunday 26 and then I'm going to do story time Sunday 27 sometime this afternoon so it's going to be called the story time sunday double feature this is the story time sunday double feature part one and this story is called a story of hope um it was a story that i uh, came up with years ago and for this one I'm going to um, not do it live. You're going to hear a recording of me. So get ready. Welcome for welcome to the story of hope. Story time Sunday twenty six. I'm just getting it up here if you're wondering what I'm doing. This story starts off uh, somewhat, um, it doesn't seem like a Christian story, but it is. It's about a doctor who is unconventional um, and he loves patients and loves being a doctor and loves everything about it and he was dating a nurse but um, they broke up because it wasn't going well and then um, the nurse fell in love with the um, with a donut shop guy in the hospital. Um, so she's getting, his ex-girlfriend is getting married to a donut shop guy. And all his doctor's friends are, are coupled up and everything. He's the sweetest person, a little unconventional. He's always getting in trouble with his boss. So anyway, um, he, on the day of his, of his ex-girlfriend's wedding, he decides to work because he doesn't want to go um, to the wedding. So what happened, what happens is um, um, Tori to Burner, which is, um, who is a reality star, pop star, magazine queen person, um, comes in with third degree burns on every part of her body. And it turned out that her husband, um, her husband uh, caught her on fire and this is a shock to the world because where as far as the world was concerned 
or the public was concerned, they had the perfect marriage. They met on set, fell in love, waited until they were married and to, to have sex and then they were they were um everybody's role models. And now the world is wondering what happened. Um what went so wrong in this marriage? And to make it worse, um, Tori's parents, her mom is her pup publicist and her dad is her manager. And when she gets admitted to the hospital, um, instead of being concerned parents, all they're concerned about is total um, how is it going to look to the public when the doctor, um, Leon, Leon Cummings is the doctor's name, when Leon comes into the room, um, like, it's like a zoo, you know how, pe how celebrities usually like to keep the paparazzi out? Well, her mother and her father think the more paparazzi, the better. The more um, public things are, the better for your image, good or bad. Public, any publicity is good publicity. So he, Leon, comes into Tori's room, and there are camera, there are camera people, there are news. Uh, people, there are reporters um, throwing questions in her face, there are, and to make things worse, she has a little sister who is doing um, kind of like a Facebook live from the hospital. She's like, my name is Amy Taberner, my sister is Tori Taberner. And she's doing a Facebook Live from the hospital. And the hospital administrator says, it's really good publicity for the hospital. I wouldn't normally allow it, but it's really good publicity for the hospital. Leon gets so mad at everyone and just totally throws them all out. He says, get out, and he says, if, if you're not here, here as family, get out. And he, um, he says, I'm calling, to, I'm calling security if you don't leave. So all the camera guys get out, and her family is the only p people left. He, and he says to the family, if you're not here, to support Tori in her town of need and just are here to get publicity or to get her, her next scoop, um, I, I'd like you to leave as well. And because um, he sees Tori's face and she's scared and whatever and nobody seems to care about this girl. She's 26 and her husband just poured, um, just set her on fire uh, and nobody seems to care um, and, she, and Leon says if you're not here for Tori, I don't, I'm gonna throw, I'm going to uh, ask security to escort you out. She doesn't need this. looking at her face and, and then they're so scared of, because of the bad publicity where that they all leave the room her sister and her parents just leave the room they don't even fight for her they don't even ask about her condition they don't even ask about anything so and then when everybody leaves the room he says, I'm Dr. Cummings. Um, 
are going to be your, your physician your physician while you're here uh, he says you're he says I know you're tired so you can sleep yeah so 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 he goes he leaves the room and lets her sleep and she, before he leaves the room he turns her he um he calls her name. She says, Dr. Cummings, thank you. And he says, you're welcome. And then he leaves the room. And the next day, um, he does his, his morning rounds to check on her. She's fine. Um, and she's fine so he he does his he does what whatever he does in a day but while he's doing his other patients and looking after his other patients he's thinking about her so anyway when he is finished his shift he goes back to check on her and um uh when she sees him she smiles um she's like dr cummings nice to see you and Nice to see you too, um, Tori. How are you feeling? Good. And he, she said, Doctor, how, how bad is it? Uh, and he's like, well, because he's not sure how much he should tell her because he doesn't want to upset her, but he doesn't want to lie to her either. He's like, well, it's, it looks worse than it is. Um, and he tells her how, how, he, uh, how she, she's doing. And he talks to her for a bit about general stuff. And then he goes home. And then when he goes home, he, he can't get that sad face out of his mind and heart. So he breaks all protocol and calls her and gets um, and gets that person on, on the front desk. Um, they said, Dr. Cummings, nice to speak to you. Um, do you want an update or whatever? And and he, Leon says, no, I'd like to be transferred to uh, Tori to Bernard's room. He said, and the, the switchboard nurse said, okay, that's like something like that, strange. Um, and then he gets transferred to her room and she picks up the phone, hello? And then he says, hello, this is Dr. Cummings. I just called to see how you were. And then she says, I'm fine. And then they talk for a while. And then she, um, they talk for about an hour. And then she hangs up the phone and says, Good night, Dr. Coming and says, Keep it all calling and see you tomorrow. And he says, Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. And um, so in the next morning, uh, he So for the next week, that's what happened. 
he sees her in the daytime and he checks on her at night and then he calls her when he gets home and then the week after that he's on the night shift because it's like rotating shift one week days and one week nights so he's on the day he's on the night shift so when he comes in he checks on her at night and then he goes and and does his other patients and then he he checks on her again before he leaves in the morning so the first night he he checks on her the second time she says she she's up in bed reading and she's like, I couldn't sleep, so I just thought I'd read for a bit. And she's, and she says, she says to him, and they get talking, and she says to him, you know, my family wasn't always like that. We, we were, we were a regular family once upon a time. But when we went to get, well, we, we played together, we had fun together, we went camping together, we went to the beach together. I, I got grounded a couple times, but nothing serious. I remember, I remember when my sister was born how happy we were to add to our family. Most sisters are jealous of their little sisters. But me, I was so excited to have a little baby to play with. Um, I was 12 when she was born and it was the happiest I've ever been. Then one day we were out as a family and we were out at an ice cream uh, parlor and someone saw me, a producer, a talent agent saw me and said that I had the face to be in, in, the, in modeling. So I, I called my parents decided to call him because uh, we were broke and struggling. So they thought one modeling job will probably pay for us to keep our house and all that stuff. So they called the town agent, they got a modeling job. And one modeling job turned into two, turned into three, turned into four, turned into movies, and her popularity just grew and grew and grew and grew. And as her popularity grew and grew and grew, they started acting less like her parents and more like her manager and her publicist. And the family began to get more fragmented and now they're not even a family anymore. And then she's like, I shouldn't be telling you this, but I wanted you to know why my family is like that. Um, and she's like, and he's like, don't worry about it. And then he, he um, goes home and on his way home, he can't stop thinking about her. And he goes to sleep thinking about her. And the next night, um, at his second uh, round, when he's about to go, go to sleep, um, she says, um, 
she tells him about her marriage, about how um, she met her husband when she was 20, and it was all, and it was all a setup between her husband's manager, her, her father, and the producers. The, see, they, they um, managed um, to, to let them meet at a party, at a cast party for a movie that they were both doing, because their husband's an actor too. And it was all contrived, you know, the whole um, dating thing, the whole, you know, falling in love thing, it was all, it was all contrived. It was all a big setup. Even the wedding, even the proposal and the wedding was a big setup. And that whole, they had this whole uh, True Love Waits campaign, like um, the fact that they were waiting for marriage was a big thing, and, and um, church groups and all these stuff is said, look at this couple. They're waiting for marriage, and it, it was like a badge of honor. But the truth was, um, they, um, he started yelling at her. He wasn't very nice to her. He called her down, emotionally abused her, and sometimes, sometimes physically hit her and that she had to um, cover it up with makeup and lie to everyone. And when she tried to tell her parents the truth, her parents didn't believe her. So she had to carry on this ruse and she felt that she couldn't get out because what had happened, and she found out too late, was her father and her husband signed a contract about this whole dating thing and that they, that no matter if she wanted to, she couldn't get out. So she had to take his abuse. She had to take his, his um, put downs and constant things um, and constant shouting at her and hitting her and pushing her down the stairs. So she was an emotionally abused woman, a physically abused woman, and she she couldn't get out when she tried to tell her parents. They didn't believe her. Um, they told her to take it and that she was the luckiest woman in the world that people Everyone wanted her husband, and she had him, and all that stuff. And uh, she felt she had nowhere to go. And that whole true love waits thing, well, he was cheating on her for, from the, almost the moment they met. True love didn't wait. Um, <laughs> He was cheating on her from the, from the moment they met. And the moment she would look at another guy, he would get so jealous that he would slap her and beat her and all that. He was a monster. And she was always afraid that he would kill her. But when she tried to tell her parents, when she tried to tell her friends, they didn't believe her. Because he, he seemed so nice and like a wonderful man. They thought she was crazy, but she wasn't. She wasn't. And when they got married, uh, well, the wedding night was the worst. Um, he spent the whole night with another woman and then blamed her for it. 
made her feel like stupid and like she was not enough enough of a woman for him. And the fact, um, and because she wanted to, um, and because they wanted to have this perfect family, she, she wanted to have, uh, in the contract that she signed with her husband and her father, she want she was supposed to have a child within the first year but she couldn't get pregnant and the fact that she couldn't get pregnant um, and get the more fame made him really upset like he went from drinking once a week to slowly every day and I like, just beating on her every day and um the night that she uh went the night that she um that he caught her on fire he had come home really drunk and he wasn't listening and he poured kerosene on her in a jealous rage and took his cigarette match and threw it in her face and lit her on fire. And now her, her husband can't be found. He's, he's gone about his business so they're trying to find him but he can't be found. And after she tells him, after she tells, after Tori tells Leon this story, he cannot believe when he leaves the hospital room, he actually goes to throw up to know what this woman had been through. And, um, and he couldn't sleep that night just thinking about the hell she had been through. And, and so the next week went on the same. They would talk at night. And when they would talk at night, there were um, the other feelings became stronger and stronger and stronger. And he said, you know what? I can't be her doctor anymore because I'm attracted to her and that's unethical. I can't be attracted to one of my patients. I need to stay, stay away from her. So he asked for a transfer and he made up some excuse about his schedule being too busy, her injuries being too complex and um, the the hospital administrator um, bought, bought what he was saying and um, so she, she got a new doctor and on her birthday a few weeks later um, she got present from the whole entire hospital staff and everyone loved her and everyone was celebrating her birthday bringing balloons and she got letters from fans and her instagram was blowing up and what happened was um she um was she she was talking to one of the nurse and the nurse says what do you really want for your birthday what do you really wish for your life and and she said well i want to be kissed she was like and the nurse says what aren't you married 
and he and she's like, yeah, it's a long story, but I want a real kiss from a real nice man. And the nurse is like, don't we all? And, um, and now Leon is behind the door about to knock on it when he hears this. Um, and then that night, he, he hangs, he hangs around and sneaks into her room and sees if, and sees if she's awake. He knows that he's not supposed to be there um, when the ship isn't going, but he can't help but think about her and worry about her and, you know, all that. So he says, they start talking and then um, slowly he sits on the bed and, and he uh, and he leans down he thinks just to kiss her on the cheek like a friendly peck on the cheek but she doesn't she turns her head to say something to him and they end up kissing on the lips and um and it is it is so powerful and passionate these this doctor dr leon and tori kissing on the lips and this is totally unethical and they both get taken away and carried away with themselves and he stops the kiss first and he runs out of the room and says I'm sorry I'm so sorry and then he runs out of the room and then vows never to see her again. He can't. His feelings are too deep past doctor and patient. He can lose his job, he can lose everything. So what happened was, was um, he, he goes about his business, doesn't see her. And then every time, Every time he sees her, though, in passing, um, she is just, um, she's just more beautiful to him, and he's more handsome to her, and there's a time where she's going for her therapy, and they look at each other and stare at each other. Uh, but they don't say anything to each other, they pass each other in the hall. And what happened is that um, um, okay, he has another patient uh, who is a king who is like lo loyalty and he's looking after this patient's son and then when he's looking after this patient's son um, something goes wrong with the procedure and the little boy dies and then uh, because of what happened and because the person is royalty, um, the person threatens a lawsuit unless they fire Dr. Leon. So they fire Dr. Leon. And when they fire Dr. Leon, the night that they fire him, 
um, is not not supposed to be. Um, and she hears that he is fired because of another case with this little boy dying. And um, so, but one night he's thinking about her, thinking about her, thinking about her. And then he sneaks into her hospital room and he just sneaks in there to see how he's doing and then when when he sees her she she runs to him he says oh Leon I'm so glad you're all right I missed you they hurt I heard you got fired. He's like, I did, but I just came to say goodbye. And she's like, I love you, Leon. And, she, and he's like, I love you, Tori. And what happens is that she kisses him. And then he kisses her. And then they start kissing. And he's like, we shouldn't be doing this. And she's like, I know, I know. And then, um, He's like, but I can't stop. So they, they end up being into that. But what happens is her father, her father finds out about not them being intimate, but he finds out about uh, how close they've been getting. And and like little did they know that her father knew where her husband was the whole time and he he manages to get his own daughter Tori committed and her husband uh, who has power of uh, attorney because they got a judge to say that she wasn't thinking clearly and that she needed a power of attorney. So, um, together, the two of them, her husband and her father, got her committed because of uh, what they thought was going on between Tori and Leon. So the day, the day after they were intimate, um, Tori uh, got got committed to a mental institution, although she's not um, mentally disabled. But they made it look like that. They made it look like she was so distraught that the doctor took advantage of her and all that stuff. But that wasn't true. Um, so she ended up going to this, to this um, mental institution. And um, about Nine months later, close to her delivery date, um, uh, they, okay, so what happens is that a few weeks later, they find out through a battery of tests that Tori's pregnant. 
and nine and then the husband knows it's not his because they couldn't find him and so Tori knows that she's pregnant but they just tell her that she's sick um, they don't tell her that she's pregnant so she thinks that she's losing her mind and because the plan was to keep Tori in the in the mental hospital and take for the husband to take the baby and raise it as his own and just say oh my wife's mentally ill I'm taking care of our beautiful child together but what happened is um, when Tori was like eight months pregnant she had an accident and it fell and she needed to to be rushed to the hospital because um, at the little clinic um, where the mental hospital was um, they didn't have the equipment to take care of her and save the baby so what happened is they had to rush her back to the hospital where Dr. Leon worked and um, uh, and there was a, um, like so Tori was rushed in there uh, eight months eight months pregnant four weeks from her due date and uh, the media coverage said whose baby was it um, the media found, finds out that she was pregnant and there's all this speculation on whose baby it was and um, uh, Leon, hearing that Tori's back and pregnant, he does the math. Uh, okay, so what happened is Tori um, goes into early labor um, four weeks early. The baby can still survive on her own, but still. Uh, yeah, so they get the baby out, but Tori's um, temperature starts going down and she starts, uh, her heart starts slowing down because of they were, there were um, complications um, because in the home they tried to give her something uh, that they said was medication but it was something to keep her kind of unaware of what was going on unaware of the fact that she was pregnant and unaware of the, the fact of the fact that it was Leon's um, but the thing that they gave her ended up like slowly stopping her heart they tried they tried to find it um, they tried to start it again, but they didn't, so Tori died. And after Tori died, um, this little baby is left, and her parents don't want it. Nobody wants it, and they, they want to give it to, to someone, but they can't find anyone, and they're all ready to give it to um, child services or children's aid to find a home for the baby who's a girl um, and um, but Leon puts two and two together and says I think that's my baby um, he goes to the hospital director and says I think that's my baby 
and and they get a DNA test and it is his baby. So he takes her home and calls her Hope Tori. Hope because she gave him, gives him hope and Tori because of her mother. So she t she takes Hope, he takes Hope home. And then when Hope grows up, she's told of her, her parents' story. She's told of the abuse, she's told of the affair, she's told of what happens, happened. And the weight of that is totally crushing to her. When she's about 16, she goes through depression. And when she, she has to be admitted to the hospital. And when, when she's at the hospital, she meets this nurse who introduces her to the Lord. And she gets saved. And she is just a light for the Lord. And she, she just, um, she just says, no matter where you've started, my, my life story started with an affair between a doctor and his patient. Although it was a love story, it still wasn't right because my mom was married and, and uh, although it was an abusive relationship, this still wasn't right. But her messages no matter where you start, the Lord can restore everything. And she goes around telling her story and um, millions of people come to Christ because of her story. So that's this story time segment. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this this first story time Sunday for the day. I will I will do a second story time Sunday this afternoon. So guys, I'll see you later. Bye. For Storytime Sunday 27.